Good morning, good morning. God bless you. Oh, God, I pray for the people that are experiencing all kind of devastation in Florida and all around the world, hurricanes, violence, evilness. God, I pray you stretch out your hand, Lord, and that will be done. Amen. Oh, wow. I'm sitting here, and um, uh, good morning to you. God bless you. Have a wonderful, marvelous day. And may blessings fall down on your head like raindrops, and the desires of your heart be met. I was sitting here, and, uh, you know, I, I crack up to myself. <laughs> and I was like, uh, I'm the diary, my living diary. I was sitting here, you know, and uh, I was thinking about, uh, yeah, darn, I, I could not go to church today. You know what I'm saying? I'm not feeling the car. I've been doing this, and I'm coming up with all kinds of excuses why I can't go. And then it hit me. You know, the pastors always say that as soon as you start making a little change, uh, you start getting on your feet and you stop going to church. You know, and then I start thinking about uh, a song. I couldn't think of it. And here it is. It's Juvenile. And y'all remember it. I didn't know it was Kyle High, but I listened to a little bit of it. Uh, <laughs> wait a minute. Where is it at? <laughs> yeah, uh, y'all hear it's kind of high about Juvenile. You know, all of a sudden you're a big G. You think you're balling. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about myself. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Your little job, get your little shoes and stuff. Well, let me talk about me. I got my little shoes. You know what I'm saying? And then they're like, oh, okay, I don't need to go to church. You know what I'm saying? Let me find something else to get into. And the devil is a lie. Yeah, so soon we do forget. But, uh, yeah, I got a lot of things on my plate. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to give me some breakfast. Uh, uh, to God be the glory. There's a lot of things going on, and I'm just trying to hear his voice and, and see what he's saying and what he be, has been saying and what I missed. Uh, had a strange dream last night. I can't really make out all of it. So uh, it'll come to me in bits and pieces if I keep on thinking about it. But it was strange. You know, I don't know. I got to figure that one out, too. But, uh... Like I said, uh, the car is okay right now, so I probably got an electrical problem, so I'm not going to worry about it no more. What I'm going to do is concentrate on trying to get me something, you know, new and get me something American-made. <laughs> California cars. Well, when I had my Mitsubishi, my Mitsubishi, I had that car for four years. Four and a half years, and that sucker was bad. You know, I didn't have no real serious problems with it. It started breaking down on me in the fourth year, about the fourth, yeah, fourth year. It started getting silly, and a lot of that was due. It started being people didn't work on it that well, but yeah, other than that, yeah, that car took me through. That's a cold car, and Mitsubishi. I gotta give it to him. Yeah, I had me a Mitsubishi, my terrible sport. Yeah, so like I said, but I'm gonna get me something basic that anybody can work on. <laughs> a little four year old kid can work on the car. Oh yeah, that's the starter. That's the alternator. I know everything, you know, and so. Uh, with that being said, I just want to give God praise. You know, I thank God that I can not walk. You know, I thank God that I do have a little job right now. You know what I'm saying? And hello, I told y'all to keep on praying. I said keep on praying and ask God. Tell God what you want. And tell God where you are. And God will answer. What they say, you say, just say yes, maybe. I'm going to say no. And uh, I've been praying. And so a lady called me about a job position yesterday. Well, y'all don't remember applying for this specific, specific place. I've been still putting in my application. Like I tell you, I do myself. Don't sit down in, in a place because the door opens up. Because you don't know what door guys going to open up. 
God don't tell you to stay somewhere. He don't tell me to stay somewhere permanent. I had to learn that because I want to get somewhere. Ooh, the money's good. I'm going to stay right here. And God's like, no, he puts you in a place for a minute. And that's what I love about my deal, why I could always watch those plays over and over, and I still can, because they, the, the real plays, you know, they have a beautiful message, a godly message. And uh, one of his plays, when he's talking about uh, friendship and relationship, and uh, I'm not saying that he's the master of and he picked this, and he might have gotten it from somewhere else, I don't know. So I'm not giving him the praise and glory for that. I'm giving him the praise. I'm, I'm thanking him for it being translated to me the way it was. And he talked about how people can come into your life for a season. And that some people are like branches. You know, some people are there to stay. You know, you hang on and they'll be there no matter what you go through. Some people are there when trouble comes and they're a little frail branch. They gone. Then you have some people that they there for a minute and get what they want out of you. And then they're gone, you know, so different types of reasons. But nobody is always in your life permanent. And I think that's something that we've been, uh, uh, mis <laughs> it has been misinterpreted in our lives. That every day, and we get in a relationship. And that was, that's what causes a lot of people to commit suicide and, and uh, domestic violence. We get with somebody and, uh, hello, <laughs> been there. <laughs> we get with somebody and we think, no, nah, you're not leaving me. <laughs> Now, boo boo, we together forever, and it's not always the case, you know, we want to make somebody be with us, and they don't want to be with us, you know, we want to make somebody be in a relationship with us, and they don't want to be with us, Woo! <laughs> they left us a long time ago, we still sitting back there talking about yesterday, and they, all, they done moved down to another relationship, got kids by somebody and everything, we still sitting there talking about we together. So, yeah, so everybody's not, jobs and opportunities and things like that is not in your life forever. So we need to look at that and always take that into account. Um, but like I said, I love it, Juvenile High. <laughs> it, it came to my mind. Like I said, a lot of things I love how God will let things come to my remembrance. But I love it. And he said, yeah, you're like acting brand new now, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you think you got everything in control. You don't pop it. Yeah, I'm balling now. Yeah, I don't need nobody. I don't need to go to church. I, but when you're damn, that's why I said get in a church somewhere. Get in a, please get into a church somewhere. That's talk, that's leading from the Bible, not leading from the self. Cause I, I, lead, I don't stay in the Bible, so y'all know me. I, I try to come out of the Bible, but you know what I'm saying. But like I said. Go where you get the word, where you get fed, however you get fed. Go there. But like I said, get into church. Please get into a church because it gives you a lot of leadership and guidance. You know, tab too. Better, please tab. You know what I'm saying? I got to keep my eye on that too. Yeah. Yeah. I got to redo that too. Yeah. For the day. Yeah. And, um, but yeah, get in church because, yeah, a pastor's a real pe preacher. He'll keep you on point. Not just keep you in church and get money off of you and, the building fund, a real pastor, he wants you to get the word of God, and he wants to help you for the future. He's not just talking about today. And just like now, look at it. I'm old as Methuselah. And here it is. I had to, re you know, it came back to my remembrance. Oh, yeah, you get react real brand new, aren't you? Yeah, when you were struggling, you going through stuff, which I'm not out of struggling, so don't get that twisted. I'm still going through some things. Everything's not gravy, but it is better than what it was. You know, it's way better than what it was. I just got just transportation because I like to go places. And where I live, it's difficult to get around with without having transportation. Because the buses where I live are not reliable. Because I'm on the outskirts of town. I'm not knocking talk. Talk is a beautiful, a great thing. Let me always say that. It's just that where I live is difficult. I see people get on the bus with uh, house shoes on, pajamas. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, y'all got confidence in this bus. But yeah, they're in town. They know I'm going to jump on this bus. You know, if it takes too long, I can walk down two or three blocks, the bus is coming. Where I'm at, you be walking, there ain't no sidewalk. So it's, it's difficult. But you know what I'm saying? Where there's a wheel, there's a way. I just have to prepare for some things. And uh, I just know I can't take, I have, like I said, you got to pray and you got to ask God for his leadership and guidance. What does he want you to do? And like I said, I have a job interview. I'm going to check the job out. 
it's in town. Uh, it, it's it's a little. It's not far from me. <laughs> it's not that far from me. But you know, I see. I see. You know what I'm saying? And uh, like I said, I wasn't gonna answer. And then God said, "Didn't you pray?" <laughs> I'm telling you, I love him. He said, "Didn't you pray and ask me for a way out?" And here's some doors opening. He's not saying that I'm necessarily gonna get the job, but he's saying when I'm open, some doors step in them because I can I can knock myself out of a job. See, that's the thing. We can knock ourselves out of a blessing, and then we turn around. But God, I love the story. I love the story. I love it to the day I die. When the man was shipped on the island and he was sitting there and he kept on saying, Oh Lord, please come and help me get me off this island. I'm out here by myself. Oh, help me, Lord. And a boat went by. He oh, it ain't God. Then, you know, a, a boat went by, a ship went by, a plane went by, and all that. And he said, No, that's not God. You know, and we too busy looking for God to come out of the sky, our blessings to come out. And, um, ooh, ooh, we be looking for Billy D. Williams. <laughs> We be looking for Billy D. Williams and it's a barney fag. <laughs> Ooh, Lord. Ooh, Lord, no. But hello. You know, but it's like that. You know, uh, we have our expectations and we knock out God's, <laughs> God's will. We try to. Well, we do. We said back, you know, God help me, God help me. And then he says help me. Oh, if not, I don't want no help like that. And so, like I said, he's been getting on me about the situation with the car. Well, the car I'm having so many issues with these cars. And so he's been talking to me about that. And so, mm, yeah, because there's some things I didn't see. I didn't see, you know. I'm not going to talk about that too much yet because I want to figure it out more. I don't want to, like, oh, throw it out there. But uh, I have to look at that some more, pray about that some more, see what he's saying about that and change that uh, the best I can so I can be in, go into his will, you know, and uh like I said, um, oh, the song just came. His goodness and his mercy forever. Yeah, you know, just walking and talking with God. It's a beautiful thing. And what I've learned, too, uh, throughout this week is how the devil comes and he'll tell you your health is bad and, oh, the car's going to break down and you're not going to get here and there and you're going to get fired and, He'll come to you with all kind of negative things, and that's why you got to have a good prayer life. You got to know how to pray, and I'm not not them long prayers. God saying get out for her, but not these long prayers. It don't have to be a long prayer. Just God help me. God see see me out of this situation. God lead and guide me. God move me from her. We too busy get caught up listening to people talking about you gotta you gotta pray. You gotta stay on your knees. I'm gonna tell you, you gotta have my emergency prayer. <laughs> That's what I call it, an emergency prayer. Well, I just turn around and I say, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. You know, sometimes I find it difficult to get on my knees, and I'm not going to lie to you. Lord, make me tell on myself right now. Lord, Jesus, don't make me tell on myself. Lord, I'm talking about trials and tribulations have been hitting me. I'm talking about masterfully. I'm talking about woe. Until I found myself, I'm standing in the store. And I, I'm, I'm trying to get my little basis because my appetite is not the same, you know. And it's not just, it, it, it is stress because my stomach has been in knots dealing with the car, dealing with the, mainly dealing with the job. It's not the car, it's just dealing with that job too. And just everything coming at me and feel like you're standing alone and, and I'm trying to fight for people's rights and my rights and my mother's rights and people's rights and then you constantly fighting and then you hear no and then you hear people coming at you and you don't know what they're coming for you to you for are you friend are you foe and then you know it's just like okay wait a minute i'm getting overwhelmed and you just get so overwhelmed and i'm standing in the Kroger's and i'm i'm standing in front of the beer counter and i'm looking like wow <laughs> you know just to just to relax you know just to take something just to just woo just penetrate my brain just let me not think about all of this you know I got to do this. I got to do that. I did show up for the library yesterday, like I said I would, uh, to start the elderly program. So that's in effect. Uh, uh, it will be on uh, the first Tuesday of the month. I'm waiting to hear from them again, which he didn't, Michael didn't call me, so I will call him again. But my plans is for it to be uh, the first uh, Tuesday of every month. 
and uh, I wrote, I have written an agenda, and like I said, I will not be going into anybody's bank account, uh, but I will talk about, uh, tell people how to, uh, the elderly, senior, senior, I call it senior saints, I have papers written up, I will publish them in Yelp, I will go into Yelp, and I will go into certain social, I will go into all social media, and I will publicize, but I have to wait until I get the okay from them, because they don't know what Tuesday for sure will be open. So when I find that out for sure, and there will be a telephone number and Vigilantes for Jesus email is at the bottom. Excuse me. And uh, like I said, it will be a dummy account. We will not be setting up real accounts. P.S. We will not be setting up real accounts so no one can think I'm trying to take their money. We're not going into anybody's bank account. But I will show you how to go in to save you some money, you know, and how to get what money you have lost back returned to you. And, um. So that, that's all my place. So I did that. And then I had to sit down at the library and I printed everything up, you know, and I had a guy at the library help me. So like I said, I wanted a, a visitor to the library. Uh, it will be at 39, I believe it's 3910, 39th Street, 39th and Broadway Library, the big, beautiful library. I love that library. That library there, it will be downstairs. We will, be, and guess what? How good God is. First, they said, I thought I was going to get the computer room. But, uh, hello, found out I will have the big room. So, we can have coffee and we can have, uh, we can have donuts. Woo! We might have some little chili dogs because I like to have eating meetings. So, oh, my God. It's, see, and it's like when you talk about, when I talk about my dreams and my vision, no matter how depressed or how down I am, that encourages me. Have something in your life that encourages you. Not just people, but have some dream, some vision, something in your life that encourages you, that makes you want to go on. When there's nobody around, because I don't have people around me. I don't have nobody sitting specifically around me to say, hey, you're doing a good job. Good girl. Keep it going. Oh, awesome. You're so great. Go, Janet. Go, Janet. Go, Buchanan. Go, Buchanan. Ooh, yeah. Oh, that's good. Oh, you thought of that yourself? Oh, wow. Oh, mm, mm. Wow. Magnificent. I don't have that. <laughs> I'm my own cheerleader. If I want to cheer, I'm my own cheerleader. I don't have anybody like that. I'm trying to get people there, but people can't help me unless I ask for help. And that's the same thing I'm saying to people that want to commit suicide, want to take their own life. Ask for some help. Ask for some help before it. And that somebody killed their kids. I don't know what all happened with that story, but a lot of times in this time of the year, and it's just real, it's real talk. As it gets close to Christmas and the holiday, people want to kill, you know, kill their kids, men or women. People want to kill their kids because it's like, I don't want to leave my kids here by themselves, you know. I, I'm going to kill myself because the holiday's coming and I'm by myself. Boo boo, go to the movies. Call me up. I'm getting ready to put this number out there. Call me up if you feel like killing yourself. I said that once before when I first started my video. I had given my address. I had given my telephone number. Call me. Don't take and kill yourself over no bills. Don't kill yourself over no man or woman. Don't kill your kids over nothing. You know what I'm saying? Don't kill yourself. It's counseling. There's 411 numbers. There's 911 numbers. Uh, 411 is the government where you can get out there and you can call people to get assistance with uh, your bills. You can get help. You know, you can get help paying for your LG and get help. I just found out. They said you can get help with your wife. I never knew that. Uh, you have churches, uh, churches that do it. The uh, uh, Cry Crisis Information Center. All these places. They moved a lot of places from birth, but there's places that will help you. Uh, pay your rent. Help you with your bill. <coughs> also, some people might not be aware. You could call LG&E and ask for an extension on paying your bills. And tell them your situation. And, uh, and oftentimes, more often than not, they will help you. They will make arrangements for you to pay your bill. Also, the water company. I can't remember. I've used it, all of these before. Uh, uh, with the water company, I think it's two or three times they will take and uh, let you change your billing date. Yeah, I think they'll let you change your billing date. I think that's what they do. Uh, AT&T. If you have uh, internet or telephone services, all of these places like that. Call them on the phone. When you call AT&T in Pacific, make sure you get the representative's 
name or their number because oftentimes they're not. I mean, they're a busy place. Believe me, I've had my hmm, my uh, loud chats with them. One person don't know what the other person said. Then I'm cut off. But then, oh, yeah, oh, we see now after I get through arguing with them. Oh, yeah, now we see where you have made that call. You will be uh, connected back up. So, yes. You know, so there's a lot of information that I have learned through a whole lot of experience that I want to pass on to people. And uh, I want people to know of ways to save money and ways to keep their LG&E and their water around, you know, because I've been there. So I want to give you the help that I have, you know, that I have received and some of the knowledge that I have learned through trials and tribulations. And uh, so with that being said, God bless you. I'm going to grab my little breakfast and... Uh, like I said, I'm not going to be brand new. I'm going to get my butt to church, you know. I miss the, uh, Wednesday and I miss Sunday. So I miss Saturday. I miss Saturday church and I miss Sunday church. So I don't know. Uh, uh, to God be the glory. God bless all the children that are out here, that are out here and it's raining today. They're on these bus stops and they're on these long bus rides. I pray, Lord, for their safety because when it's raining, the roads seem to jump up on some people and cause them to run into buses and buses to run into things. So I pray, Lord, for your angels to protect all the children on the buses as they go to and fro to school each and every day. I pray, Lord, for myself as well as others that we slow down when we're passing the school zones. We never know when children might be crossing the road. Uh, I pray, Lord Jesus, for all the children that are not able to go to school due to the hurricane, the storms, and the trials and tribulations that they are enduring abroad. But, Lord, when I say abroad, you know, Florida and all the cities and towns, I'm quite sure the people at, what was it, Japan, the Tsumi, I'm quite sure they're still, they're still going through. All of this stuff, things like this cause PTS, you know, and post-traumatic stress is because you're reliving people constantly. Hello. Come on, Jesus. Yes, PTS is brought about when issues like this come up. People constantly, go, they reflect. It's like people in the Army, police officers, people like that. When, this, when, when a real occurrence of a previous event occurs, a person is taken back to that event. And some people actually relive that event. That's why you have some people that have been in the military. Hmm. <laughs> My mama used to date a man like that. Come on with it. I tell y'all, I'll be telling y'all the truth. <laughs> Woo! I thank God for my life. The man Samson that helped me in the flood that was calling, checking on us when we was in the house in the flood. Yeah, he was in the military. He had post stress. <laughs> he had post stress. He had a whole lot of stuff going out. God, he's dead right now so I can talk. But yeah, wow, wow. He would sit there and tell my mother and me. Oh, my God, because I, like I said, I was always an inquisitive child. I love to listen. I love to learn. I've always loved that, you know. And so he would be talking and he telling, yeah, and he's looking at my mommy, look at me. I was seven or eight, maybe eight. And he's talking, and, yeah, I was in the military, and, yeah, and, and uh, oh, Lord, I don't, it was a lot, you know, people laying their dead, bodies piled on each other. You know, I don't know what army he was in. <laughs> Sometimes he was in his own man, you know. He be sleeping, and my mother said he be sleeping and start talking and fighting, fighting in his sleep, you know. So hey, mm hmm. So believe me, that does exist. People do suffer with that. That's the same thing with domestic violence. If you see a woman, a woman, or a man that's been hit or been abused, sometimes if you raise your hand, I've been around people like that. I've been around a woman like that. If you raise your hand real fast, like you get her to say something, she will jump. Because she used to get beat all the time. So automatically, she, she just reflects straight back to when she was abused. She thinks you were going to hit her. So, hmm, yeah. I've seen storms. What is it? I've seen fire and I've seen rain. I've seen uh, sunny days that I thought wasn't going to end, something like that. Uh, but I never thought I would lose a friend. I have to go. It's a guy that sings that. I like that. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's a beautiful song, but yeah, uh, I've seen all kind of things and heard all kind of things, but mostly witnessed all kind of things. 
Yeah, some things that a child shouldn't see and shouldn't hear. Anyway, hello, just reflected back. <laughs> I'm back, but I'm not brand new. I tell you that. I'm carrying my butt to church and do my tithing. So God bless you and keep you. And like I said, get into church so you can remember from where your strength comes from. Don't run to church just when you're going through some trials and tribulations. You're suffering. You lost your job and you're hungry. Go to church all the time so you can stay fed. You know, a little bit of my dream is about a pond. I'm no fishing or what. But uh, God bless you and keep all of you. May the rain fall on your head and it be a blessing in your life. All your bills be paid. All your worries disappear in the name of Jesus. Amen.